Thank you for joining us for another For Investors by Investors Long Beach Cerritos podcast. As always, we're proud to be your all education real estate resource without any kind of sales pitch. If you'd like to attend one of our meetings in person, we meet on the last Thursday of each month at the Cerritos Library in Cerritos, California. You can RSVP at meetup.com forward slash for investors by investors. To find more investment resources, just such as blogs and podcasts and content from other Phoebe groups, go to forinvestorsbyinvestors.com and search our entire library. Now on to the podcast. So thank you guys very much for joining us. We're here for the first time here today. Oh, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. None of you guys will get pitched to any boot camps or booking tape sets or <laughs> any of that fun stuff. We basically, for investors, by investors, was put together by a couple of full-time investors that were tired of that sales pitch didn't want to go through and you know sell at the end of the presentation, wanted to go to a place where you can get networking and the education without that pitch involved. So uh, there's multiple chapters throughout Southern California that have that same mentality. Um, we have a Phoebe Orange County, we have a Phoebe Pasadena, we have a Phoebe Westside, uh, we have a Phoebe Clover City, we have uh, this one, we have a Phoebe um, uh, uh, South Bay, the one that I run, <laughs> I keep forgetting that. So... <laughs> I think it's a little up right now. Yeah. Can we turn down the mic a little bit on that side? I think it's on the, the right side of the monitor over there. Or if you click on the screen, click on the other screen, see if we can turn it down a little bit. That was, <laughs> that was pretty loud. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, anyway, so the presentation will be in loudspeaker today. So, <laughs> But anyway, so so today uh, we're going to do no, this a little bit off. differently. We're going to have uh, Robin and Will here talk about effective and efficient property management. And if you guys don't know... Property management is literally the crutch all, the, the, the thing that will break you when investing in real estate. If you don't know proper procedures for management, your rental properties will not cash flow. And you won't know what is a good and bad manager either in a lot of these cases when you deal with these outside managers that sometimes are horrible. When I first started, I, I fired five management companies before starting my own. And, and that's to be something to be said because um, the, you know, I think I had a drunk one time. I had somebody that was stealing from me. You know, you, you deal with some crazy stuff, and so you want to review your statements, really know what you're doing, and know that your managers know what they're doing. So asking the right <coughs> questions of those managers is the most important thing you can do when you're starting out to invest. So, you know, looking at asking them about the delinquency procedures and you know and their and their leasing procedures and you know the the how they how they find their tenants and what their qualifications are and things like that. All those things are super important when investing in real estate. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back, turn it over to Will and Robin, and they're going to go and talk to you guys about the property management stuff. So it should be great. You guys should pick up some good good information. Thank you guys very much. Can you talk normal now? Is that okay? Is it I'm fixed? Like, I'm paranoid. Okay. It's going to be all right. Too louder. So, so, switch it through. Which one? Just switch it over to the, from that to, to the mic. For this. Oh, yep. There we go. Do that right now. So my name is Will. That's Robin. I don't need a microphone, actually. But we really want to thank you all for coming. Um, we put a presentation together. We've done this before. We've talked about regulations and fair housing and everything under the sun. And we know those things. But uh, we, we decided today to do a, some more case study kind of things. Robin, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Robin Reed. Is that volume Okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. I'm a little paranoid now. Um, and I own a company called Concept 360 Property Management. We're a property management company located in Long Beach. We manage right around 400 units in Long Beach, um, the South Bay and surrounding areas, multifamily and single family homes. And we've been doing it a long time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's about... In a nutshell, so <laughs> so we decided to do a presentation for you guys tonight that shows some of the um, before and afters that we've done this year, um, and and how we've maximized some properties for some of our owners that we um, that we managed for. The first one is a property in Bixby Knolls area of Long Beach. It's a seven unit building. I wanted to talk just a little. Most people, when they hire a property management company, are thinking more money, less problems. But you found out yourself, Serena. It's not always that way, is it? <laughs> so this is a, something we found. 
This is a smoke detector installed by a property management company, and it was installed on the ceiling. <laughs> Usually they want the date there. I know this is your first night, but there's a battery inside there, right? <laughs> they want to know when the thing was installed so they know when to change the battery. Many property management companies uh, have given this industry a really, really bad name. And it's, it's, the industry is learned it because there's a bunch of people that have been subpar. We like to think that we do things a little bit differently. This is a little short video on what makes us different. Oh. philosophy was don't touch it, don't talk to them, don't raise the rents, everyone will stay and um, that's, it showed and um, so when, when he inherited it he said, he came to us and well, he came to us and said, you know <laughs> he'd been managed by another, one of our competitors for yeah. 20 years and he said, look, I've been to them my mom died a while ago, a year and a half ago and I said, can we, what can we do to, you know, get this thing going? And they said, pretty much, no, that's just it. They said, they're going to poke, and you just got to take what we give you. Yeah. So he, we, we came on board, and this is sort of the, the look of it. This, the, the, this is the, the, I got this little pointer today, I'm very pointer like proud. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the front of it. There's some little thing here that had a big leak in it. Uh, and this whole thing is, has some sort of, this is an escape hatch. You can go underneath, the, you can crawl underneath the concrete and underneath it. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But a, a lot of trip hazards and uh, all of these back here, all of these are studio apartments. There's one two bedroom here and one uh, studio here. And just, and, and like zero parking, no parking, no laundry. No pool table, no tennis courts, <laughs> just pretty much bread and butter. <coughs> Those are this, and this was the bane of my existence right here, the mailbox area. <coughs> yeah. So, do you want to talk about the owner a little bit? The owner, what about him? The owner restores portions. Yeah. Yeah. He's the preeminent Porsche restore in the, on the West Coast. And so when he, when you met him at a shop, he said, look, look at these cars. I want this place looking like one of these cars after we're finished. Yeah. And I, he's meticulous to detail, meticulous to detail. And, you know, some, some owners, it, 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 
depends, you know, what their budget is, how much they want to spend. What he said, look, I inherited this, so I'm willing to put some money into it to, you know, maximize it, and um, it made sense for him. This was the rent roll when we took the property on. You can see at the very bottom we've got a one bedroom, one bath for 450 a month. And this is Long Beach. I mean, this is not out of state. This is... <laughs> 2017. Know. Yeah. And um, so I, you guys can probably guess the first, um, the first one we did a 60-day so who, to vacate. So who did we get first? Yeah. Well, it wasn't evicting. It was, no. you know, yeah, suggesting they move. Yeah. Number seven. Number yeah. seven. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding. Yeah. Number seven. Yes, yes. Number seven. That's the first one that was asked to, to leave. Polite. Now, yeah. I've got it. Why, why is that? No, they only be in four. The rent was so low. So, if you're going to first start out with the lowest one, right? You can raise it on them. Well, let me just show you the inside of it. Let me just, uh, <laughs> you'll see, it. You'll see why that's a no, Camille. So, yeah. after 25 years in the place, Robin goes in there to talk to her. She says, nobody in 25 years has ever been inside my unit. Now, this is the flooring in the unit. This is all not up to code. If you look here, this triangle is a different pattern than this and then this. So that's, that's three in one. This has some carpet here, yeah. a little wood action, some sort of marbleized uh, something. Yeah. Uh, and you see that there's, you'll notice there's going to be a wallpaper theme too because this is a lath and plaster old building. The plaster just falling off the walls. Okay. It, it is, and it's falling off. There's dust. It just, it is, it's a mess. So uh, Robert met the lady, saw the place, and said, "Look, you're not going to do that. This, because this is." This is some of the worst I've ever seen. Those aren't really flip flops. It's a doormat, uh, <laughs> and that leads that leads into the kitchen. Okay. Was that number seven? Yes. Number seven. This, this is number seven. Yeah. And that's sort of you asked a great question about why didn't we just raise the rent? Well, it was uninhabitable. Quite frankly, it was uninhabitable. And she had such a low rent because she was taking out the trash or something. Yes, she was doing a little bit of quartering on the property, and so they kept her rent um, the lowest. And, um, you know, so just like the woman who originally owned the property wanted to, you know, keep it, uh, keep it low so that the tenants would stay there, the tenant knew, I've got it low, I'm not going to call anybody even if the, you know, I've got nine different floors in one room, you know, she yeah. didn't. So, so this was the this was the that was the floor. This is the wall. So uh, this is the wallpaper activity in here, and and uh, it, it's just I mean it's a teeny tiny small one bedroom tiny thing. Yeah. All kinds of wallpaper and color stuff coming out. Here. It's unbelievable. Uh, the next shot is what happened after we got in there after they left and and four or five weeks later. It, it looks like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you first meet an owner, you don't know this is the very first time that Robin had ever worked with this, this man. Yeah. And so she had to get to know kind of what his... You were talking about that just a little bit. Yeah. You know, why don't you go a little bit... You, you know, every owner has their own uh, sort of budget, sort of idea about how, how they want to, you know, renovate. Obviously... He knew that things needed to be done on this property. Um, did he have to do them so nicely? No, but he won't have to redo them. You know, it was so bad that he thought, I might as well do them so nicely, and then, you know, we're going to be good for a while. And I met him there one day, and he said, he said, well, when I was 12 and 14, I used to have to paint these units. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. I used to have to take a brush, my brush, not roller. I have to paint these. He so said, he's been in the family forever and ever. But my, my, my parents just didn't, they just didn't take care of him the way I want to take care of him. Yeah. Is that normal, how involved he was in the renovations, or is it because they were so bad? He wasn't involved in the renovations. No. Okay. No. Or I mean, like, selecting the what, or do you not do he didn't, he, off? he told Robin, what did he tell you? Um, what do you like? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. What, yeah, do, yeah. what do you like? What do you think we should do? And so he didn't, he didn't even show up. I mean, he showed no. up rarely. We'd sometimes there'd be, and we'll get to some in a minute here, but sometimes things would happen 
where the people on, on the, doing the work would say, please, you gotta come see this. I, I, I you gotta come see this because yeah. it was just, it was out of whack. And, and, yeah. the, and the meter was gonna be running and he wanted to cover his butt, make sure that everybody knew that this is what he found or something like that, you know? So, um, it's kind of like an onion, yeah. Especially building that with that much deferred maintenance, you never know what you're going to find. And so this this is going into the this is the, the little you know this is the tiny little living room. So it's leading into this kitchen over here, and this is the kitchen before. So. Uh, again, this person really, really liked the wallpaper, you know, really liked the wallpaper. Sometimes when we meet an owner, they'll say, hey, this, because the kitchen countertop could be, could be used. You could use that. The, so, some owners would say that. Some owners would say, you know, let's just, you know, clean it, throw some matching floor down, paint it, and, and call it a day. And, um... You know, in a building like this where there's no parking, we needed to maximize the rent somehow. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Do you have to do anything with the electrical? Because, like, you know, build this one looks like it's about a fifties build. Yeah. So, um, do you have to go in and strip out some of the electrical? It's all redone. All redone. It was all redone. We've had to we had to do something with it, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one I walked through, right? Downtown. Yeah. So yes. Nice comes up. Yeah. 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 That's a question. Yeah. Um, so for the rental, do you guys subcontract or do you guys have a partner? That's what, what do you mean for rental? Uh, no, for, for, for the, the rental. Do you guys subcontract or? We do. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm just going to tell a story about you. Her, yes. her dad was an architect, uh -huh. a, a engineer, a builder, and a contractor. Her father was. He's a developer. Yeah. An developer. Architect. Yeah. So when we go through like Home Depot and where she the, where they cut the wood, and it's, you can smell the sawdust. <laughs> Her, her eyes tear up. She loves, she just loves this kind of stuff, right? So she gets in it yeah. like she loves helping. And so the guy, this owner, when you asked, he just said, hey, I trust you, just whatever you think. And then he, he started showing up with his car buddies and showing them the units after we got it done. Because they're like, man, I never even lived in an apartment like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so anyway, so this is the kitchen. So I'm... To, to further that point, I, I am involved in um, most of the renovations that we do, especially something of, like to this scale. There's another case study that we're going to show you guys, and I was really involved. I ran that one as well. But um, we don't have in-house guys that work for me. Yeah. We, we use um, different contractors, but we've been doing it so long that we have a lot of guys that we really trust, and we know their work and, and all of that. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yes. How, how many square feet and how how much did it cost for the renovation and how long did it take? We're gonna. That's a great question. We're gonna get. <laughs> Jump into the units. Good. I like it. No, I just wanted to point out before we get into this kitchen thing that these yeah. windows, we were so he was so eager to get started that we started before they replaced all the windows in the building. All the windows in the whole building got replaced. <laughs> Yeah. But they got replaced about <clears throat> three weeks after this. Yeah. And the guy who did the work is such a craftsman. He came in and said, you replace the windows, don't worry about it. I'll come back and make sure they look brand new. You know? So that's, that, well, I'm going to just, <laughs> we were talking so much about the other one, but I'd just like to go back and show you that that, this is the old, old kitchen. Oh, man, there we go. That's the old kitchen. Yeah. And here's the new kitchen. So, big difference, yeah. Big difference. Um, this is the four bathroom. Uh, there were some other pictures, but uh, Robin wanted to put them on there because it was disgusting. Horrible. I don't know how to do this. There yeah, you're doing it. All right. Again, the windows haven't been replaced. It's small, but it's clean. It looks sharp. It looks pretty modern. Yeah. Um, this is the, the next one. another unit. unit. The next door neighbor, um, and this is a studio. So it's basically this room. You know, there's a little hall in the bathroom and the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, that's the bathroom. There's the kitchen. And you can put. You can't even put a queen size bed in. No. That's that's it. It's got a little closet. It's it's a small little. You know. Can we just tell them what we're getting for that? Or yet? Or no? You don't want to do well, that till we get to the rental. Do you remember? I know. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a lot more than it was. I know yeah, that. Yeah. I know that. So, um, that's, this is the, the new bathroom that place, again, teeny tiny, small. And is, is there a secret to me? Oh, here we go. No, you're right. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> I just wanted to, before Robin met this man and took over, he had a, a, a roof built on this property. But, <clears throat> there's, so this is a new, this is new to, when we got to, it was still there. But there's a scupper right here, which is a thing that the scupper drains the roof out through this hole, right? Well, the scupper was leaked. So all the roofs in all the, you know, this, this isn't demo. This is what they were living with. Yeah. They were living with this, but they were so far in the market, they, were, they weren't saying anything to anybody. Is that plaster? That's plaster, that's, that's plaster. yeah. What year was this again? Mm. 2017. No, what, what, what? Was when it was it built? About 16. Yeah. Okay. So the president had plastered the same yeah. That's crazy. That's a huge liability. Like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that is I have I have dozens. We had dozens and dozens and dozens of these pictures, and I had to, I, we, I couldn't put them all up there. But if you if you look at if here, these 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 posts are supposed to support the building. These posts don't go to the ground. They've, they've been eaten up. There's an old saying in our business that this building is being held up by termites holding hands. <laughs> yeah. So, but this, I mean, it, this, somebody put this in before, long before, you know, Concept 360 took over. But this is just, I mean, this is just, you can see right here, this, there's nothing connecting this. So, and they, they found some other stuff later, but most of the wood structure in this property is gone. And that's going to contribute to the, the end cost, too. I, I just want to get some of these things out there. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> so we started doing stuff on the inside, and we started doing stuff on the outside. Yeah. Can I talk about this? Or? Please do. Okay. Yeah. So this is a gas line. This is the main gas line that brings gas into the entire building. So that's one of the times I got a call. Sam, Sam called you and yeah. said, Somebody's got to come over here. I, nobody's going to believe this. Yeah. What? Come yeah. So, these right here, these are holes. These are holes in, in the, the gas in line. In the main gas line. When they got to the gas, they're out front where? Yeah. smells like gas or? Yeah. He took out a shovel. Good thing they didn't, they didn't get a little spark or something. He said, we're looking at these smoking cigarettes out here. Because these are actual holes in the line. Now, the, the line had been in the ground for so long, and it compacted and it held it in, but no gas was still getting out to the ground. So... That's the gas bill for that? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then, then this is another thing that adds to cost, because you get you start getting into things, and then it, it just more and more stuff starts happening. Yeah. So, so again, there, there were a lot of little kind of pictures like this, but... Okay. So... It was determined that all the all the concrete had to go. Uh, it, it, so there are people living here now. And this is all in the front. And and, right? and these pictures are all the front. Did you guys have to do this? No, people are living in it right now with all this space because all this stuff. Liability too, just that. Yeah. Right, so and yeah. and so it's also you got to keep them happy. You got to keep them. You know, it's going to be a lot better. You got to hang in there. And so uh, Dana in the office was. Well, we did send people to hotels, too. Yeah, yeah. We, we did for some of it. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, is that when you coordinate something like this, the one person that we had never really done any, had any dealings with was the guy who was doing all the concrete work on the outside, and that, that landscaper. So he'd show up at 6.30 in the morning on a Saturday, uh, and, and the band with the phone would start ringing. Yeah. Start ringing, start ringing, start ringing. And so... You know, it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you gotta that, that you gotta coordinate to make sure that they work. Right. These are the things that most rental owners never even hear about or see. If you deal with a contractor that shows up at six thirty in the morning right. on Saturday, yeah, right, he's jacked out. Yeah, you know, so yeah, <laughs> I'm more surprised that he actually showed up early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Did you get the permit for for the, all these uh, inside and everything? Permits, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. 
And so there was, this was running down the side. I think we, I showed you this before running down the side. They pulled all that out and, and they just left it here now. They left it for probably two weeks. Is yeah. that where the crawl space was? They're just like that. That's where the crawl space was. Right, yeah. on that side. And so Robin was talking to the owner, and the, and the owner was, because, so the owner was a Porsche, the Porsche, you know, detail thing. Well, the guy who did the landscaping was doing it in trade. Or at work on his Porsche. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of other things involved, and we didn't have any control over this landscape thing. He's got a cowboy. He was. So, uh, so you know, look, Robin's like, look, man, we gotta get this. And, and she's nice and mild mannered now. But, oh boy, let her go, and she'll, 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 you know, let somebody have it. And this guy that was a, that contractor, I think, Grant. Yeah. Grant, she, she let Grant have it. But so they, this is all dirt now. They've got all that now. My dear, people are living there. It's the small little places. You bring some dirt in, you can't get away from it. <laughs> it's just right there. You know, so they, they left they left the dirt on, on that the entrance there for, for a little while. Not too long, but so uh, is this too much detail? No? Is it okay? Okay. So when they when they took there was a little pony wall. Well, there was a little pony wall, you can see it right here, it was on the front. When they took that off, they found out that all of these that are holding up the, the outside of the building, all these were, they were just shot. There was nothing, there was nothing there. They were falling apart. This story has a happy ending, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, everyone's like terrified. Yeah. And so they, they had to take out, they had to take out all this part all the way around the entire building because the, 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 the stuff that had been touched the ground was all rotted. So, they laid this out. This is all drainage, the drainage for the building. And I can keep going faster because, you know. Yeah. So that white part of the bottom is where they where they um, had, to, had to patch it. This is right before the concrete pour. Uh, this is after the pour. Oh, wow. Like, see, it? oh, yeah, I'm just getting excited now. They think they can see something getting better. <laughs> now, the, the front of the building, they wanted to do something to make it a little bit more modern, right? Instead of the box that it was, there was that little pony wall thing here that they took down and they decided they're going to put, it's basically a tile effect yeah. here, like they're big slate, slate looking tiles. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is what it ended up looking like. And it's hard to see right here, but this line here was supposed to line up with this opening. And while it was being made, while it was happening, Robin said, it's not lining up. It's not what the plan is. And there's yeah. going to be hell to pay. We were there with the, she was there with the workers. Yeah. And. Well, they fixed it. And they ended up, this is, you can see it a little bit better here. Yeah. It's just from a design, it's, it's the little things. From the design point, this, this, this. This whole dust just doesn't this doesn't add up. But they put they put a, a nice new finish on it. It's a, a stucco, a really really fine stucco. When it comes out of the bag, it's almost like flour, but it's stucco. Yeah. And now this they came back and they fixed this, so this little detail lines up. That's the new that's the new front the, the new front of the building. While we're doing all that stuff. They decided, well, the owner said, I want to get a gate, a fence, a nice fence. To go down the side of the property. Right, between the two properties. <clears throat> Robin said, do you, want a, do you want a wood fence or what do you want? What did yeah. he say? He wanted, he wanted metal. He wanted something that would last for a long time. He wanted something really... With the width of his units, he wanted something that would, you know... Really modern. Yeah. I just wanted to go a little faster. Okay, go. I don't know how to work that thing. So the, the new gate includes a, a, the new trash area had a, a, a door on it, and so they installed this this massive. I mean, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but it's a really bitchin' looking fence. That's kind of go. Um, and um, these stairs were falling off when we first took over. Keep going. Yeah, just go ahead and hit the little thing over here. A lot of fence pictures. So. Is that 
that's a metal fence you said? Yes. Metal fence. How much does something like that cost for a metal fence like that? Uh, like seventy five hundred dollars. But it'll last about twenty years. What do you think? What do you think a wood fence in comparison might run? So Maybe four thousand. Okay, so it's yeah. not too bad. No, 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 it'll last forever. You know. Yeah. So, so this this is what all the units had to be. I mean, taken down to the studs and redone everything on the inside. This is the last. Go ahead. This is the last unit that was done. Did you do this to the studs too? All of them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, I showed you they're all just rotten. They all had yeah. everything had to be replaced. Sub flooring. So this is the last unit that was redone. This is a one bedroom unit. And it's tiny, you can tell by the little stove and the little refrigerator, right? So you can tell the scale, it's a, it's a really small unit. They, they call these Barbie stoves. Oh, they they, seriously, they call them Barbie That's stoves. Weird. Yeah. And, and this is the, uh, the bathroom, which looks amazing. Yeah, it looks like you're staying in a hotel or something. Yeah. I mean, it's a really, I mean, his craftsmanship and it just, and I, I know we're getting six. You're getting. They're getting 1650 for this for that one. I have a look at the right one. Yeah. I don't remember. So this is the this is the final product. This is the front the, from what it was before. And when people go there, it's, it's got a, it's got a new it's got a new door on it. I mean, it, it just I mean people stop when they're walking down the street. People pull their car over, take pictures. I mean, it really. Go to the next one. What's that small little <clears throat> like house to the left? Uh, this one here uh, is just a little crappy house. <laughs> Does it belong to the property? No. 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 It's just really close. Yeah, it's just next door. Do you say the rent is from 450 to 1650? So we're going we're gonna to show this. We'll show you the rental. Next one, I think. Yeah. From 450, I'll show you. Are we on something now? Yeah, so we're just. So they planted, they planted these here to provide a little privacy seat, sort of between each. The last one is, oh, and, and there's a packing mailbox. And we've got a beautiful mailbox now. All those janky mailboxes are gone. There's just one more, and then, yeah, that's, so the people that live there will soon enough be able to look, they'll just see a green kind of forest. They won't see the neighbor's place. They won't see the neighbor's place. So this is the before picture right here, and this is the after picture. This project took... It's ongoing, but it took about a year. It started in November of 17. Right. And there's still a few things that he wants to do. He, he wants to change the numbers and do some lighting on the front and some other things, but go ahead. So here's the rat roll, before and after. So the one that, the, that original one that we were talking to you guys about, the, the number seven for, for 450, we're not getting 1,400. Mm. One bedroom, one bath. Um, so why the variation between the studios, why the 975 and 1150? Are you talking about, uh, uh, which Number one? five and six. Yeah, five hasn't, five hasn't moved. Oh. Okay. Everybody else turned over, we, we turned the unit, right? Right, right. So five. that's why you increased the, the We just increased his rent, but he doesn't have it all tripped out. You know, so okay. that one, that one hasn't been... So this one was is the original person that was there, and uh, five is the original person that was there. So there's still some upside on those two units. So why is the two better with the one the same room? They didn't move up. Which one? You know what? Seven. Two better. You know what? Two better. This one hasn't been upgraded. This one has. This is the original. It, we inherited that. Robin, when signed the contract, she got that one with it. Those two tenants have stayed. Five, one and five have stayed. So you didn't do any renovation on it? For, for those two units, no. Not yet. This yeah. is yeah. yeah. increasing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's. They were so below market. So this, this is what it was. This is what the, what the gross rent is now. That's an increase of forty-three percent. In, in still with upside. It was still some, still with some upside. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm new to this, okay. so maybe if we can kind of just break down the basic fundamentals sure. of how you guys make money, right? So is the money, um, you know, what's it costing you to fix it up? And are you charging the owner more for that? So are you making money on that end? And then secondly, are you, obviously you are making more money off the rent, but does the right. owner know that? And is he aware of the extra that you, I just want to understand the business model of how you guys make the money, right? So on the property management side, yeah. um, we have on our website, we have pricing um, because we do offer um, an insurance product for, um, 
for loss of, of rent and, and malicious damage and evictions and stuff like that, um, which comes at a higher percentage rate. Um, but typically, on, it depends on how many units that you have. We charge a percentage of the collective rents. So just say so, in this case, 7% of the collective gross is what the management company makes. Right. Pardon me? Did you charge anything for the management of the No. No. We, we did not. I, um, on some projects we do, this one we did not. It's, it's a near, very near our office. And um, yeah, so we did, we did not. I, I, and if I do, it's something where I have a client who lives out of state. He wants me to handle every part of the renovation. He wants me to put a percentage on top of it. He knows it. I don't, um, I don't do overages, so if I have a, a, a home that I'm managing and I send a plumber out, I'm not putting something on top of the plumbers. Some people do that. I'm not, I don't do that. Um, the only time I would make money on a renovation is if it's something like, like, like my out-of-state client who I handle everything, and, and he doesn't want anything to do with it. So I do all the terms like it's my own house. So how long would it take you to recoup the initial cost for the fix-up of the unit? So for that one, you spent X amount of money on that, right? So, so just want to clarify. Yeah, we don't pay for it. You don't pay for it. No, okay, he pays for it. Okay. So, yeah. How much was your project for and to get that? To answer your question, his cost was one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. All, all in. All so in that's what he's that's what he's paid oh, out seven, so far. Seven units. So he pays for all that. Yes, he does. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. And you're managing yes. it. You're project manager of pretty much the whole. Okay. Got right. It. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. so so every three or four weeks, Robin goes to him and says, "Hey, we need to check for twenty thousand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. We got this coming up, and we're going to do that. So I mean, so he does that, and uh, but the check so that he can write it off through his taxes. It all goes through his trust account, <laughs> so that he can write it off his capital improvements. Sure. Yeah. So hit the next one because this uh, after this forty three percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go to the next one. Okay. You said total renovation cost was one hundred fifty thousand for that. Yeah. Yeah. So far. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and his 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 mindset was I inherited the building. If I put one hundred fifty thousand into it and I can double the revenue, almost double it. Yeah. Help the investment sense. for me to put yeah. the money in. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about this one. Yeah. The, um, so we have a client who um, buys notes, um, and he foreclosed on a second that he had bought, and the um, it was a two bedroom one bath house in um, in Long Beach, and he called us up and said, he's like, hey, can you go can you go check this out? And, so he was in the foreclosure uh, process, and he didn't own it yet. And so once once he owned it, he said, "Oh, so it's a two bedroom, one bath. And what do you think I can get for rent?" And he'd not seen the inside, so I went over there. Well, we walked through, and then I'm like, "Wait a minute, two bedrooms, one bath, three bedrooms. Let me go in the backyard, and now there's a granny flat." So this house that he foreclosed on the second and started paying on the first. Um, that he originally thought was a two bedroom, one bath, but we thought in that area he could get about sixteen hundred per month for. Um, it was a four bedroom, two bath, and the guy who lived there before was in construction, and so he it just added on to his own house, right? And um, so he asked you, he asked you, do I need to tear this stuff down? Yeah, he, so he, he did. He said so. It wasn't the the additions, the additional two bedrooms weren't permitted. And if you sell it, you, you can't sell it. You either have to get permits um, or, or um, tear it down. So you, you know, and, and it's, not, it's not cost prohibitive to get permits on something that doesn't have permits. You know, you, you, it, it sort of isn't fun, but you can do that. So he said to me, do I tear the other two bedrooms down? I said, well, what's your end game for this? You want to... We're going to rent it out now. Are you trying to sell it? Because um, he's always moving money around. And so I said, you want to sell it? And he said, no, I, I don't want to sell it. I want to keep this forever. This was kind of a gold mine. And so I said, well, let, let's just keep it. Then we can rent it out using legally using all the four bedrooms. So um, instead of 1600 a month, I don't know if the next slide will tell you. 
tell you. Well, then I showed us the pictures, I think. Okay, so this is this is the home before. Um, and the inside pictures, there was there were many, many colors of paint. Um, but this is after we had it trashed out because it was completely full. Um, so this is after we had it trashed out, but before we did anything. You see the, the wood floors could have been um, probably saved, polished, and, you know, refurbished or whatever. But it was cost prohibitive, prohibitive because he wasn't going to be selling it. It was something, it was a rental. And so it was cheaper for him to just put down some vinyl plank and it'll last longer, you know, with tenants in there. So um, we made that decision and sort of, I walked through this with him. You know, you, you look at a property depending on what the end game is, right? It's like, are we wanting to flip this? Are we wanting to sell this really quickly? Are we wanting to get out of it? Are we wanting to hold it? Are we always going to have tenants in here? What's the, what's the game plan? And he wanted to hold it, tenants. And I said, look, I think we can save the kitchen. And I think it'll be cheaper for us to, put, to save the tile, save the kitchen. He had wanted to originally, he thought, oh, let's do all that gray, gray paint everyone's doing. It's not in this one because um, I wanted to keep the brown tones with the, to, because we're saving the kitchen and we saved the bathroom. I don't know that we have bathroom pictures, but we were able to save the bathroom as well, which obviously kitchens and bathrooms are expensive too. So, um, for, 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 for a renter, I'm sorry. Yeah. For a renter, they, they're going to rent the, they're going to rent the kitchen and the bathroom. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of this is walls and floor. So if you have to provide a good kitchen and a good bathroom. Yeah, so we were able to um, we were able to save both just with a little zhuzhing up. Um, we had the cabinets sort of um, restained and, and, and whatnot. So this is the outside of the backyard. Um, this is coming out of the back of the house. The um, the additional we have a little thing. Yeah. We drunk with power with this thing. Um, <laughs> Well, maybe not. <laughs> Is it on? Yes. Yeah, Do you see it? Oh, I have to hold it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so this is that that last bedroom, the, the the third bedroom, and then we come out here. This is the laundry area in here. We come out here to the backyard. Coming down these steps right here, you go straight back here. There's this is the granny flat connected with, to the garage with a bathroom with a full here. bath. Yeah. Um, and this is just a little shed out here. Um, so, oh, oh, I did that. So this was the bathroom. See, you can see we could save the tile, whatever. We obviously we repainted. We did a mirror. We did a new light fixture, and it was perfect and cleaned it obviously. And, um, this is before and after of the gate out front. Just we were there one day, and the guy was working on the gate. So I'm like, this is a great before and after. That was the gate, and uh, so this was. This house was, I don't even know what year this house was built. 24. Yeah, very old. Do you, you guys ever see these floor heaters like this? So it obviously didn't work. It's like a hazard. And so we had that taken out on, this is one side of the wall, and then that's the other side of the wall that it came out. And, and we had it, um, you know, patched up and, and matched the plaster. As, and, and it worked out really well. So then what we ended up doing, special. We got wall heaters like this, these floor heaters. Um, they aren't too pricey, but we did have to do some extra wiring, and you've got to, each one of them needs its own little um, thing. Yeah, yeah. thermostat. Is that an AC heater? Or is that just no, a just a heater. You don't get a condenser and all that stuff. No, that. yeah, it's just a heater. So, what we probably would have done maybe differently, um, is just keep a wall heater, you know, uh, because legally that's what we could have, that's what we could have done. Um, I think it's nicer in the long run. It did, it did add an, 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 oh, an, an additional expense, um, of the electrician because each one had had its own thermostat, but, um, but it worked out. The kitchen, um, we did have all of the yeah, that was fun. So this was where they pulled out the old faucet. And I went there one day and I was like, oh no, we're gonna have, I, I wanna save the kitchen and this is broken. 
They fixed it, I think, with magic. <laughs> and it's perfect. You cannot tell. I don't know how they did it, but it was amazing. So this was a cool um, paint that I chose for the outside. I really like that. It's kind of sort of a putty. Um, and I thought it went well with the tile. <laughs> you don't want me to talk about that anymore. <laughs> So here's the kitchen. We got you know new appliances. You've got your new hood range, you know, and all that. And um, the cabinets. I don't know if you can tell from the pictures, but they were really spruced up. And, and um, so now remember when we originally thought it was going to be only a two bedroom, one bath. We were thinking about sixteen hundred a month. We're getting twenty eight fifty a month. We rented it in four days, and we we literally had. I had to have Will come with me to show it because there were so many people signed up to see it. And it's, you know, somewhat large because there's people in the granny flat and the garage and everything. And the amount of people that came to see it, I was like, single family house. Yeah. What year was it when you guys did this? Like, built We just did this. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then, sure. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think we filled the vacancy yeah, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he, it was a, it was a slam dunk for him, for for my my uh, my client, but um, it worked out really really well. Just so you guys are aware, if they were to do this on a multifamily building with those increase in rents like that, which are very you can do that on higher end units and things like yeah. that, from sixteen hundred to twenty eight fifty. If you did that per unit, you're talking about an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars in value in a six. Yeah, and that's right. a six cap. This will probably trade at like a five cap because it's fully renovated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the cost, the cost of this renovation was about twenty-four thousand. Yeah. And this this yeah. project yeah. took uh, six weeks. It was raining, so it probably would have taken. It would have taken four weeks. We have it, was, you know, all it that. Was thing. Condition. It was not that bad. It wasn't as bad as our first one. Yeah. Well, Roger, you, you had a question. Save the kitchen and save the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. That's that's your, your total income on the seven units was about eight thousand dollars, right? And you charge seven percent for management. Right? Yes. That's only like five fifty six hundred dollars a month for, for doing the maintenance. That's all you guys as a as a, a management. We just make the management fee. Huh? Yeah. But we manage a lot of properties. So, so, so yeah. So you know I'm saying for fifty six hundred dollars that's a lot of management. And we don't want this. No, 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 no. We we make uh seven percent on the collective gross. Yeah, so seven percent is about fifty six uh, five hundred and sixty dollars or right. seven thousand dollars. Yes. So a month, that's all you charge? Yes. For me? Yes. No, no, we don't do we don't, we don't do, we, the, So whoever goes out to do the maintenance, they submit their bills. Right? So if somebody goes out to fix a door that came off, or somebody has a plumbing issue, or things like that, then those are subcontractors that then submit their bills to us, and then we pay for the owner's trust account. Does that make sense? So the management company really isn't paying any of the bills. Each each building has their own trust account, and all the money for the, the rents come in, they go to the trust account, yeah. and then all the expenses come out of that, that big bag of money. And one of the expenses is one of the expenses our is the management fee. fee. Yeah. And if somebody had to come over and put a new water meter in, that would come out, and then at the end of the month, they, the rest of the money that's left for the owner gets paid to them. It was still it's for fifty six hundred dollars in the. $560,000 liability. We, so, li liability for the management company? Yeah. In our contract, our, um, our, can you explain what the contract says? About the contract the says that the, 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 if anything goes wrong, the owner holds, holds us, we're, we're, we're an additional insured with, with, the, with the owner. And we're held harmless. And, and we're, yeah. we're held harmless and all of those things too. So. You have to have that. Most every single management contract has that because they're acting as agents on behalf of the owner, right? For doing work for the owner, basically. Right. So, so this is our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She said you have to learn this. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> but um, I think we'd like to open it up for some questions if you have mind talking. Can, can you talk a little bit about? Um, Proper procedures when you guys. So, you know, the primary aspects of the management piece are are tenanting, right, yeah. in that process. 
uh, obviously handling services, service calls, and that type of stuff, and repair and maintenance piece. Right. Other than obviously the giant value right plays that you guys are focused on. Right. Um, and then, you know, just from the operations standpoint, you know, the leasing, the delinquencies, the marketing, the, the, the repair and service calls. Can you guys talk about some of the procedures that you guys go through when you're doing some of those things so that we can understand, like, what you feel is proper procedures? I'm doing an interview for my Glendale building right now. So. Oh, <laughs> So we have a, a lot of things in place that, because we do such volume of management, that you know most people who who are self managing, you know, it's just it doesn't it's cost prohibitive. It doesn't make sense to have the software that we have and the all of the all of the um, the things that we have, that, you know, that, that we use yeah. all of the tech, yeah, everything like that. So um, we have a twenty four hour maintenance emergency line. Um, that's, you know, that's where your, your big money ends up going and your big problems, you know. So if, if, there's a, if there's something that happens in the middle of the night, we can't wait until office hours to handle it, you know. I always like to say, you know, property management is 24 hours a day. I do not work 24 hours a day, you know. But we, I have people that handle these kind of things 24 hours a day so that the properties that we manage are taken care of. Um, we do have a 24-hour leasing line. I mean... Do people call at three in the morning wondering about an apartment? Occasionally, they'll call early sing line, you know, if you work, you know, nights or something like that. But um, so we have, um, you know, for our tenants, we have tenant screening. We have, um, you know, we do the screening, we do the, the credit checks and all of that. Um, what are the minimum requirements for those people? What's, what are the minimum requirements for those people when you're qualifying them? It's, what, it's how much times the rent, two and a half times the rent. So, we, so you always said that we, we sort of work, we work for you. So the, the owner gets to set the criteria, right. but it's always been recommended that the, that the people that are moving in have at least two and a half times the rent. Some owners say, I want three percent, three, three times. Uh, some owners want to check, instead of when they do screening, they say, hey, listen, I want you to run a, run a, a criminal check, too. But most don't do that because the criminal checks are kind of worthless, so I, I don't recommend them. Um, I, I mean, you, you know, it's a thing that can be done. Is it done. legal now, still in California? Now that, I mean, we, there's some rough things about them not allowing you to check criminal records. I mean, that would have surprised me <laughs> if that would come, is coming down, but it still, it still is legal now. Um, yeah. Yeah, we um, we're able to to leverage um, the amount of units we have to some really great software, and we use Appfolio software for our property management that takes care of all of our, um, our 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 financial reporting and everything. Every owner that we have gets a report um, monthly, and then of course year end and. Um, and all of that, and then the, the report for your taxes and that kind of stuff. So. And, and the app folio helps also with marketing the units? Yeah, with the, with the vacancies, it, it pushes it out to about, I want to say 95 different websites or something like It's a lot. Of, there are so many websites out there for people looking for an apartment. You would be amazed. I mean, things that I've never even heard of. They're like, yeah, we saw you on Lovely. Remember that one? I was like, Lovely? What is that? Yeah, so um, so we have that. Um uh, I think it's really important for a property, if you're hiring a property management, if you're hiring a property management company here, please call me. But if you're hiring somebody out of state, please call me too, because then I can help you decide if they're, if they're good or not, you know? Um, I think that it's important that they have processes in place. Um, one of the things that you had mentioned about criteria, um, that the owner can set the criteria about what kind of tenant profile they want, but it, it has to be the same throughout the whole building. So if you've got an eight unit, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, take section eight for one unit but not take them for the rest of it. It it always it has to be consistent because of fair housing. So our I send my staff um, once a year to fair housing training. We're up on everything. I'm very involved with the apartment association, so I'm up on all the legislation um, that is constantly changing and all the stuff that they're trying to do to us in California, you know. Um, so I don't know what else. What else am I missing? Now? I yeah. Okay. Uh, with the rise of Airbnb, yes. have you ever got into that? For example, you know, I I own like a few 
few apartments in different apartment buildings, right? So right. kind of like subleasing to some extent. Yes. Yeah. That word, but yeah. Um, you know, I, in downtown LA, I, I'm renting apartments in like five different units. Okay. Um, do you guys offer services to where you can help someone like that? You know, do the check-ins, uh, respond to customers. And stuff we like don't. That. Oh, okay. you know, I know Matt's done a lot of stuff with Airbnb. You know what I'm talking about, stuff, right? So yeah. I do. Yeah, I know okay. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Matt, you might be able to answer that question about. He's talking about. He, he does some Airbnb stuff and maybe looking for a service that's like a management concierge. Yeah. There's, that would, there's services out there that do it too. That yeah. would help for that. Yeah. That's great yeah. To manage. But they're kind of expensive, though. I mean, you're talking like sometimes 15 to 20% in some cases. Oh, you know, okay. To do the management because of the heavy turnover and admin work associated with it. Because it's not like, you know, a normal tenant you're putting them in there. It's like, and it can be a little hairy and there's all still the emergency things. And they're also very, um, I'll just call it needy. Compared to yeah, it's tenant. more labor intensive. Yeah. Sure, so. Okay. Yeah. Being in a hotel, they want to serve the hotel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, right. Not a yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the yeah, yeah. <laughs> occupants. Yeah. Right, right. Yvonne? Uh, yeah. Um, if, if an owner asks you if you do inspections in the home, and they just want to see what's going on there, how do you um, how do you tell them? Do you tell them you do the annual uh, inspection? We, we, do, we do inspections twice a year. And they, we have a little kind of a, a, a software, like an app thing that we use that, you know, takes um, pictures and things like that. Stamp dated, what's it called? Dated. Stamp dated photos. Yeah. So, um, but we do it twice a year, and the way we do it is before um, the 4th of July, kind of, so like June ish, and then before the holidays, before everyone gets a Christmas tree. So we go um, and we, we notice all the tenants, and we go to check their smoke detectors, you know, right before 4th of July, where there could be a firework on your thing, and Christmas time, or there could be Christmas tree. Yeah. So, same time, no matter what moving day they are, because if they just moved in a month ago and you go... Right, well, we're probably not going to check it if oh, they just moved it. So. Be, and, and because we do it every... Um, we do it twice a year. So if a guy moves in in May, you know, I'm probably not going to go right. check him in June, but... Okay. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. Kind of, I was going to say, what kind of tenant retention procedures do you guys uh, do or do you do? Do you guys recommend to owners do, because obviously it's not meant for the most part of us, Unless they want you to do the for so what's your guys' thoughts as far as what would be like some different things you guys do to retain tenants? So we reach out to them. Um, we have a schedule before their lease is up. Um, so I think it's like ninety days, sixty days, forty five days, something like that, and um, and you know really try to get them to stay. Um, if we if we we do we do charge a lease a lease renewal fee. Um, Go ahead. I just think the best way to keep tenants is yeah. to answer their calls yeah. and fix their shit. It's really that simple. They, yeah. they don't really want to be bothered, but they want to know that if they, they call, somebody will answer the phone right. with some sincere appreciation for whatever their issue is right. yeah. and address it. You know, so Correct. Um, that's the best way to keep a good tenant, I think. You know, yeah. stuff right away. Right? Yeah. What happens when you have somebody call all the time and kind of like we're simple thing, how do you I like get to the point like okay, it's not that important, you know. It's not every week, every week, you know. Yeah. So you know, occasionally you'll get those people right, and they'll call. Especially they'll call one of our property managers in our office who really handles the tenant day to day stuff, you know. And um, you know, we have one Dana who's been with us the longest, and she'll just say, you know, email me. She'll just say, don't call me, email me, you know, and she just has to, it's just like anything, right? You got to set a boundary with them because it's like, it can't be abusive where they're calling you with ridiculous stuff and, you know, sometimes they'll try to call with some drama with the neighbor or whatever, or, or their drama with their roommate, which I just had to go to small claims court for that. So that was fun. Yeah. And these two women that lived together, they had a fight over $500 and I had to go at eight o'clock in the morning to where, what city? Normal. Downey or something. I don't, it was Fox. It was not. It was not Long Beach. So I was like, oh. and I had to go, and then I had to be their therapist and negotiate. And finally, the coach dropped it. So, so on the other end, there's another side of that too, because sometimes owners will call. Ryan. Yes. 
a nail on the 40, and this is 40, this is great to get started. So we've got 36, 48, and 16, and the 40 year owner wants to talk to her every week about the color of paint. You didn't have to have a toy, toy to pick out. You know, we've got just something, just, just like to micromanage. It's, it's sort of, so property yeah, management. I mean, you get one of everything, right? You'll, you'll property know. management, we're, they're in between. They're in between the tenants and the owners. So you, yeah. you get, she gets it from yeah. both sides. I, well, but I deal more with the owners, and then my staff deals more with the tenants. But you do have your owners that are, you know, your dreams that are just like, you know, send me, tell me how much it is, and that's it, and do pick out whatever you want. Those are my, the, I love those. I think to answer that question, a lot of times if you're setting, a lot of times it's in the contract, and it's about setting expectations. Yeah. Like the owner of it, and the tenant. And so, like, I don't have any of those issues. <laughs> okay. And again, I also have to deal with family, so. <laughs> well, that's true. It's even worse. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's an important point, though, on the owner side, because a lot of the owners need to be trained, right? They do. A hundred percent. If they yeah. have a pair, they look at sometimes the managers, it's their fault or something sometimes. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. and sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll see, you know, a, a statement that's negative that month, but it's been positive the whole time or something on a, on a building because there's a repair and you've notated it in the email or whatever it is. But they won't read it. And they'll still ask you questions about it. And they're like, they yeah. read the email. But these are the, it's like an understanding. Hey, there's volatility sometimes. Expect these types of repairs. Right. Put this money aside. You know, and training the owners is just as important as training the tenants. You know, and these things. So. And, so, and sometimes the market adjusts. You know, we need to lower the rents that we're asking. Sometimes something sits on the market for a minute. And he's like, you know, you want too much for this. It's like, I, I know, I, I get it, but. Um, we just have a new, I just signed up a new client and she's got a condo and she has had another management company since I want to say September and they have just left her condo vacant. She's out of state. And so she found us, she, we signed her up, everything, she's very excited and, and, um, we had a good rapport with her over the phone and, you know, she, she believes in what we do and, you know, we have some good references and things like that. So I talked to her today on the phone and she said, so, you think this will be rented by the 26th, right? I said, of uh, April? And, I mean, that's, a, that's in a week. Now, here's the thing. Maybe it will because a lot of people want to move in May 1st, you know. And, and if anyone can get it rented up by April 26th, it is us because of all of the marketing that we do. But, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to punish me for the last guy that didn't put a tenant in there since September, and I get a week, you know? I'm like, so you do have a lot of that with, with some of the some of the owners where you think, no, you just, it, it's just common sense, though. Once you tell somebody, please, you know? There are, and of course, there are a lot of, there are, there's lunatics out there, you know? But, Quick question. So yeah. I believe that owners like to ask you, how soon can you rent it out? What's your standard question? Uh, answer. It depends. I mean, there's so many variables. It just depends what. Um, if, I mean, it's if it's somebody that just calls me and I haven't even seen their property, I can't even tell you that. You know, I need to see what it needs. I need to see you know what rent we could get. I mean, it it, it depends. If, you know, it's if, ready, if it's ready to go. And yeah. Rents, yeah. You know, a couple weeks to three weeks. Maybe, Exa exactly. Exactly. Like like well, and, it, and if it's if if you're yeah exactly if you're realistic on I mean if, if you if, if market is fifteen hundred and you want to charge nine hundred I'll rent it out tonight you know what I mean so it's like are, what what are, you can, I can't just answer that's such a vague question when they ask that I would just say I need a lot more details to be able to tell you how long so you what's know the, what's the process like a turnover tenant moves out do you call the owner and determine a price or do you or do they come to you and say what do you think. Go for, or how does that? So usually we'll, you know, the, if we have a tenant move out, we'll say, you know, we've got somebody that gave notice, they're going to be out, you know, this day. When they're out, we go check to make sure they're out, and we go see, you know, what it needs. Sometimes it's just, you know, the place needs to, they weren't there only here a year, it just needs to be painted, whatever. Um, sometimes somebody's been there for 15 years, the place is trashed, we're going to need to do some more work. Um, it just depends. And then, we decide what needs to be done, get that done, and then we start marketing as soon as it's ready. So, so I think your question was how do you determine the rent? 
Oh, how do you determine the rent? Can you guys determine the owner determine it? I guess figure out like the number. Well, well, we because we because we're in the business and we do it all the time. You know, we, we will give our recommendations. If you know, if 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 they're they, they usually just they usually just trust us and say, okay, I you know, I I, I whatever you think, you know. So we do have a service called Rent a Meter, and um, you can go on Rent a Meter and put in the address and put in one to four units. You can put in if it's a condo, if it's a house, and it'll give you the statistics of what's rented in the neighborhood for the last twelve months, um, and, and like in a mile radius from the property. So that's super helpful, you know. And um, it's, it's like running costs, pretty much. It is, yeah, yeah. And then of course, you know, you'll you'll have your super high ones, and you think I don't know why that's so high, or the really low ones. And you just, you know, the features and the finishes, like he said before, you know, the the kitchens and your bathrooms are are really what rents your place, you know. And um, so the features and the finishes, it's really there's a lot that goes into kind of deciding what the rent, and ultimately the market decides, right? So if if, if the owner says no, 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 but I just did did this, you know. Um, Okay, well, we'll try it because you can't really go back up. You can go down. So we'll, we'll try it here. But I always say you've got to promise me if I try here and we get no bites, we're going to have to lower it because it, it's no good for me to sit on a vacancy either. You know, I'm not making any money on a vacant unit. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to hear uh, what is it kind of story like gang tenants or criminal, how you evict them? The same way you evict anybody. You just. It's it's a you know it's the same it's the same process to to evict I mean if someone's a gang member or if they're just not paying the rent I mean it's the same process. So unless you, you uh, they approve it, you just keep them. You have, you have someone else doing the eviction setup, right? Like a police officer or something like that. If they won't get out or they have. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not a cop, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. I mean, I believe all you need to do is post a three day notice on the yeah. three day notice for if they didn't pay the rent. If they're gang members that have only been there less than a year, you post a 30 day notice for them to leave. And if it's longer than that, if they've been there more than a year, it's 60 day notice to leave. Yeah. You post that notice and. Yeah. You or you get somebody to post the notice. You don't confront anybody. No. You don't, yeah. you know, you don't get their yeah. face. You know, yeah. Then, then, then the, then yeah. the process server goes up there. Yeah. And then the sheriff goes up there. Yeah. You know. Hey, Robin, I've always heard yeah. eviction stories are like nightmares, right? I mean, it's always on the tenant side, right? So, I mean, how often do you deal with those where the eviction process might take three months, right? Because I don't know if it's the same in single family residence versus, you know, commercial. Mm -hmm. I've always heard that evictions are on the tenant side, right? So it's a long process. So is it the same commercially, and um, you know, how long does that process typically take? So they can take a long time. It depends if the tenant tries to fight it or say like, oh, it was not inhabitable. Or but you know, that's where keeping great notes, getting everything in writing from the tenants, all of that kind of stuff. I, I always love when Dana in our office, if, if somebody has to go to eviction court, she's like, here's the file, and this is the, what this guy said this day, and this is what happened, and da 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 and, and it's really just in black and white then at that point. So we we rarely have any that... So you, actually, I'm sorry, this was going to, you said you have some properties in Los Angeles, right? Uh, downtown LA. Pain in the butt. Yeah, exactly. Years and years and years ago, you know, yeah. They do take longer. Yeah. In LA County, when you're not in Oregon, in LA City, right. it's, it's, it's five to seven weeks. Oh, that's not nice. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it depends on the documentation, like you said. Yeah. If you don't have that documentation, you go to the right eviction attorney that knows what they're doing and do the right procedures on the eviction, that's when they get you. And you need to hire an attorney, a law firm, that all they do is evictions. Right. All they that, do is yeah. That's who we, we use so, a, a law firm. She can call you, she can give you a referral for something. For sure, right. yeah. The only thing they do, it's just like a factory. Okay. Right. And it depends on the state as well. I mean, it's taken yeah. me a year before I had a professional tenant to do continuance after continuance. Oh. That's all they did. We wow. bought a building for a bank with them in it. And wow. Had no lease, so when we bought it, and so it took an entire year. Oh, and then we had to pay cash for keys just to get it out. Yeah. Of That's another option. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How do you pay the rent? Like, do they just pause like this? 
How do we collect the rents? Um, so most of our tenants now pay online. Yeah, most, I would say like 84% or so. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, some still like to come by our office and throw it in the, um, over the weekend, throw it in the mail slot or whatever. Um, and some just mail it in. But, um, but for the majority pay online, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say we're not using your company I don't know what I think that would be. <laughs> but tell me that. Okay. It sounds like you have all the process you need to you, basically it sounds like you were really process driven. You guys yes. are doing your due diligence, you're keeping up with a lot of legislations. Yes. Do you have like a top five list like like these are what these property management companies should be doing that they're not doing that's what they Oh, okay, that's a good question. Like if you're you know, yeah. let's just say you're looking out of state, so yeah, you're not using my perfect. company. Okay. So um yeah, so so he's asking kind of like if he's looking for, if you're looking for a property management company, what might be like the top five things that you should ask um, and, and make sure that they do so that, and if they're not, it's kind of a red flag. Right. I'm going to say, I'm going to say one is um, for our company, we open a trust account for every single property that we manage. So if I manage three properties for you, that's three trust accounts. We don't mix the money around. In California, it's a law for the property management companies to have a trust account. Some property management companies only have one trust account, and everybody's properties go in that trust account, and all the rents go in that trust account, and then they go out. It's just, we met a guy. He was trying to sell me his company, and um, he said, oh, well, I had about a hundred, I think it was a hundred and eighty thousand, what did I tell you? hundred and eighty thousand dollar mistake? Like 170 or something. Yeah. Um, that he had to write a check to put back in his trust account because it was off. Because he managed like 1500, I don't know, he managed he, he a lot. Was, he was merging, he had a new property management software. He was going from, from property wear to app folio or something like yeah. that. Yeah. He only had one trust account for all of his monies. That's right. And so when he, when he merged the data from one to the other, he found out there was a, a loss or a big $78,000 discrepancy. Yeah, so he had to write and a check. He didn't know where to tie it to because it's all, all the money's yeah. mixed. I'm getting way off your question. The, 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 so trust accounts. Yeah. That's a really important thing to ask. I would ask how they show your property because now a lot of people put lock boxes on. Um, and they'll either do, do it kind of old school lockbox where they say, okay, there's a lockbox on your front door. The guy comes to the office and leaves his driver's license or whatever and takes the key and goes and looks at your, at your property. Um, or there's a new thing that's, that they have like the, these lockboxes where somebody goes to see the property, they swipe their credit card and, I don't know if it charges them like a dollar or something. I'm not really sure. But it, but they swipe their credit card, so then that's how they're like identified. And then they can get the, you know, the lockbox opens, the keys, they can get into your unit. Is that the rent leaves it? Is that rent I think Rentley does that. There's a couple of them that do. Um, we don't do that. We have leasing agents, and we set up specific showing times and, um, and have our leasing agents there. I, you know, we own property. I wouldn't want somebody just, you know, who, who one of my employees did, wasn't looking at walking through my properties and you don't know. And so, um, so that would be my second thing. You want five, Matthew. Let me think. Um, so definitely I would talk about, about how they screen tenants. I think that's important. Their screening process for tenants. Um, okay. What? What? A preset spending limit on the contract. Oh, that's a great idea. So, a preset spending limit. So, what that is, is on our management contract, I say, if something happens over the weekend, I need to, to there's an emergency, I can spend up to $500 that we have. We always keep $500 in everyone's trust account for emergencies. So, let's say the first month, you know, you, you get you know, $7,500, but, but that $500 buffer is always going to be there just for emergency situations. So um, a lot of companies, they just spend your money, you know, they're like, oh, this broke, and their brother goes out to fix it, and things like that. There's some shady, shady stuff that they can do. So um, we have a preset spending limit, so 
I can only spend five hundred up to five hundred dollars without asking you. So I can get a garbage disposal fixed. I can get you know things like that fixed with, without having to call you and say, hey, you know, this, the garbage disposal doesn't work. I mean, I'm going to bother you at work for that. That's 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 our thing. That's what we handle. You know, that's why we have property management. So um, I think that. Uh, a lot of, wait, 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 I'm still on preset spending limit. <laughs> so a lot of companies, they'll just, uh, they don't have that. And so they can spend your money how they want. And then you can, you look at your statement, you go, you're like, whoa. So a lot of our clients, because they've been with us for so long, they don't really care about that. They just are like, just do whatever I trust you. And, you know, obviously if there's something Something. Don't perform for them, so interesting. Yeah, and obviously there's some, some giant glaring thing that happens, and I think, I'm going to call him because this is $4,000, you know, things like that. Anyway, even if they tell you, don't worry about it, just take care of it. Um, so a preset spending limit, how many is that? Is that three? Four. Can I add one? Yeah, add one. Yeah, because she's doing some research out of state. I like the owner criteria that you have as well, just making sure that they're flexible with your needs too, because... I've had issues with that in the past where, for example, mine are all one bedrooms and um, no yard. They're yeah. pretty small units, so I don't want dogs. Okay. Uh, just because they're so such small units, there's no yard, I don't want a big dog running around. Right. They, they, the property manager basically said, no, everything's the same. They're such a large company. They wow. basically said they don't do any specific What? <laughs> So they basically said we take all dogs to bed. And That's like, crazy. All dogs is amazing when dogs. Yeah, I think there might have been a, yeah. there might have been a like a pit bull, you know, disclaimer. <laughs> there might have been something yeah. like that, but it wasn't part of our original contract. But it was just basically they say we don't specify per owner. You get that right. when you don't when you're working with a really big company that doesn't when you don't have a lot of units. If you have a lot of units, right. they listen to you. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have a fourplex, right? So they're like, if you lose your one zero, they don't care. We're not changing. But they're, the they're, they're, they're shaming you for not taking for not taking dogs. Well, and, and you, know, you feel that yeah. we're not buying a bigger apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they they're like, but well, we charge a pet uh, a ten dollar a month pet. Oh, pet rent. rent. I'm like, ten dollars a month. It's not gonna cover it. That's <laughs> no, anyway, it's it's not flexibility with the owner at least. It, it helps. I know what you want your needs and make sure that the. Well, they have to understand, like, it is your property, you know? And I think a lot of, like, one of our taglines on some advertising that we did was, you know, a, you, use a property management company that thinks like an owner. And, uh, you know, I, I own investment property, and, you know, I know what that's like. And I, I would never say to one of my owners, too bad you have to take dogs. I mean, I might, because I am a dog psycho. You know, Matt. <laughs> so, we have the same dog name. So. We do, yeah. Both of our dogs are bandit. Um, so, but but um, I, I think that any company that's not going to listen to you, that's ridiculous. Okay. Next. One, one more out of you. Don't spend any long-term agreements. Oh, that's... Oh, and... Don't let them sneak into there. If you want to sell it, they get the listing. Oh, that's it. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Instead of it's vacant, you're pissed because you're like, they try to throw it in there that, that you can, they get paid whether it's rented or not because they'll try to say, oh yeah, it's uh, it's not rented, so it's more work right now. So we still have to get paid. You're like, no, wait a minute, but then you're getting paid for not doing your job. And then they have the exclusive right to sell it after yes. the Make it's sure like they don't have that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, read your contract. Yeah, for sure. And then how, how much do the managers get paid? You mentioned, you know, leasing fee and a fee. There's also markups on repairs and receiving yeah. advertising charges. And yeah. Stuff. What, what other things did you think of that um, management company charges or other leasing? Yeah, leasing fees, lease results. Typical. Um, I think I think one of the things you should look into and really ask questions about is the maintenance overages, you know, because um, that's, you know, 
you know, like when you take your car, I don't know anything about a car. So if you tell me it's going to be 800, if you tell me it's going to be 1200, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it, it's kind of the same thing. It's like if they, if they, t- how do you know, like how much it costs to do something plumbing wise, unless you're a plumber, like, I don't know, you know? So I would say, um, really look into, um, how they charge for maintenance. And look, it it is okay if they have a maintenance company and they charge you an overage and and that kind of, that's fine. But just know that, you know, just know that. So, yeah. Um, Do you provide, uh, like, paying property tax or, like, paying home insurance um, for the owners, like, for out-of-state owners or? We we do bill pay, yeah. We we do pay bills out of the trust account. Additional fee for those owners that needs this kind of service because some owners they can do it themselves. Some owners, some owners will ask you to see. Oh, can you pay for my home insurance from my rent? Um, no, we don't charge an, anything additional to to pay their bills. So I would, and, and, I would, that's a lot of work. <laughs> well, well, every but that's great. <laughs> every every client that um, you know, not every client wants us to pay their bills. I just got a new one last week, and she said everything's on auto pay. I don't want you to pay anything. Just send me the, the remittance and, right. you know, that's what I know, right? Yeah, it's yeah. challenging for us because we do have uh, overseas owners that they don't live here at all, and property tax is, like, kind of hard to predict when it's going to come for a new bill. Yeah. I don't know that there, we have any owners that we pay their property taxes. I, I don't. It could be a liability for yeah. taxes, insurance, or yeah. mortgage. What if you miss one? And right. Yeah. Like, they start a foreclosure or you miss an insurance right. payment or something. Right. That's the only issue. But when you guys yeah. do like that, you kind of have to because they're not going to get the bills from your yeah. national address. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Do you guys have like a monthly report to the home? <coughs> the expenses and all that kind of like report where everything's going on? We do. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about how you got audited. Oh, by the Franchise Tax Board. Yeah. So, California, one more time, right? And, I mean, I've lived here my whole life, but it is it is annoying. I I didn't used to get why people would be like, oh, California. I'm like, now I get it. You know, it's, um, God, some of their, just, it's like, it's crazy. Um, so I got a letter from the Franchise Tax Board, and it said, we want a list of all the properties that you were managing in 2015 and 16, I think it was, or something, and... And um, what they were looking for was um, out-of-state owners need to, we have to withhold 7% of their income for, um, for state tax. So unless they get a, um, they can either get a reduced withholding amount or they can get an exemption somehow. It's, you know, they, they have to talk to their you accountants. Have to, you have to obtain that exemption then? They have to get it. They have to get it from the Franchise Tax Board and then provide it to the Franchise Tax Board and let us know what the withholding is. If they don't have it, I have to withhold 7%. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those things where they, you know, they think it's like, well, it's, I'm not, you understand I'm not, key, I'm not making the 7%. I have to withhold 7% and then quarterly submit it to the Franchise Tax Board. So that's a thing that the Franchise Tax Board should be paying us to do. They do not, but it's like being a tax collector. It's the most ridiculous thing. And then the people that are in-state, in California, we have to have a form on file for every in-state owner that basically is like a, an affidavit saying, yes, I am in California. It's it's absolutely, re- yes. What about overseas, overseas people? Oh, yeah. So we have a client who who lives in Italy, 30% withholding. Yeah. You have to get an exemption. Clients, yeah. yeah, they can get an exemption. It's just it, they have to figure yeah, it out. You can go back at the U.S. tax ID number. Yeah. Like eight, eight bed form and have, you have to hold it. Right. right. If the manager doesn't withhold, we get penalized. Yeah. That's what's crazy. It's ridiculous. That's amazing. Yeah. I know that about California, though, too, just for out-of-state owners. That's interesting that they do the whole thing, too. I know. That's shocking. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not, not shocking. Not but not shocking. shocking. But, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Robin, since you have so many processes at your company, what do you do as a CEO do at your place? I'm sorry. What do you do as a CEO at your place? Not do like what what because you have so many where 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 is your time spent 
versus what your employees are doing and things like that? I work on the business more and my employees work in the business, I guess. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sending out, you know, three day notices and things like that. So, um, that I have a staff that does, you know, the leasing, I have a staff that does, um, all of the reporting, I have a staff that does, you know, the, the rents and everything like that. So I would say that's the kind of the best way to describe it is I work more on the business, getting new business, marketing, things like that. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I did. Okay. So yeah. the same amount for commercial property? So for instance, um, a house, let's say I'm going to charge 9.9% of the collected rent on a single family on, um, up to, I think, I, w I wish I had my website in front of me. So but, multifamily and single-family really no commercial. Right. It's, it's co commercial, are you talking about multifamily? No, uh, commercial is a, uh, like a company. company. This is an Apple, Google. Uh, like CBRE kind of does on a bigger scale, like those kind of commercial buildings. No, we don't do that. Yeah. We only do multifamily and single family. Yeah, yeah. So our multifamily prices are 6.9%. And then I think if you're over 15 units, it's 5.9%. Yeah. Of the collected rent. How many employees do you have to manage the... You have 400? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a couple of part-time people. And we have a few people that work full time in the office. How many people total for four hundred units? Yeah, I would say I would say six. We've got a couple of like part time people that are students that sometimes they're not working, so it's hard Some to say. Some of them are resident, resident managers. Yeah. Are in a building, but then they go up around that building and other properties. Yeah. So yeah. I just really quickly wanted to tell you guys, we have a, um, so all of our pricing is on our website and it could give you a good idea of, um, our website has a lot of information, so it can give you a, lot, a good idea if you're looking at a state for a management company. Um, we have a new pro product that is, um, only property management companies can buy. It's an insurance product and we buy it on behalf of our owners. Um, some of our owners choose to do it. It depends on the rent amount. The rent of the property has to, is a minimum of 2000 but it protect, protects against loss of rent. It protects against eviction and, and, and um, malicious damage and things like that. So it's at a higher percentage rate per month. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty good insurance. Rent, rent uh, loss coverage, basically. Yes. And it doesn't pay you or gets evicted and that kind of stuff. Exactly. Out and and it's and there's a ton of information about it on our website. Does it does it depend on the amount of rent you got? You like above two thousand, you said. But yes. If it's twenty five hundred or three thousand, does the premium go up depending on what your loss of rent is and stuff like that? Or yes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. And even for, I mean. Uh, Provides for somebody who committed suicide and was murdered in the property. Oh, interesting. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta cover all your bases. That's yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> Way to end with life insurance policy. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of information on that. I would, I would recommend, I've been reading your guys' blogs and things like that that you guys have coming out on management. I, I recommend you guys getting on their newsletter just because of the fact that I've gotten a lot of value just from reading some of those. Thank things. you. Like, yeah, if you're writing those or, or who's writing that, yeah. it's, it's good content. I thought it was quality. So Thanks, man. That's awesome. Yeah. If you guys want me to sign you up for that, just let me know. There's, it's a ton of information. You can give me your email or, yeah. Well, let's we'll, we'll, we'll one more question. Yeah, okay. one more question. Do you usually meet the owners in person, or do some people just interview you over the phone? Usually, if they're here, I meet them. A lot of people that are out of state, I never meet them. So, yeah, yeah. You, but usually, if they're here, I think they like to. But mostly, they like to meet us. Yeah. Can I have last question? Yes. <laughs> I'm always curious. Do you disclose? Do you have to disclose the tenant um, if there's a suicide? Do you have to disclose to the tenant if there was a suicide or a murder? I don't do the same thing. Yeah. If, if I'm selling, then yes. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Two, two years. Three years. Two years. Oh, four, three. Six days. Six days. Yeah. Six days. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? I, I have that. I, I bought the property, and then after that, uh, it turns out like the, the 
yeah, I was doing, oh, this lady died. <laughs> and, then, and then I went to the county Norwalk and um, to CC, I got the death certificate. I couldn't take any action, but then I, I was told by a lawyer that I had to disclose um, up to two years. But then normally, you know, you know, good faith issue, say. Even it's only suicide. No, we, oh, no, I mean, I'm not the wrong one. He means suicide. <laughs> oh, please, suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Long Beach. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, well, everybody. Here. Thanks for yeah. all your questions. Thank so, you. So next, we're going to have Dr. So next time, uh, I don't think next month, we're not doing the uh, this meeting because the next day that was after this meeting is going to be our summer networking event. Oh. So um, we're doing that at the Long Beach Grand. Yay. So you guys, that, that meeting, um, it's going to be uh, May 29th. Um, at the Long Beach Grand, and you guys can go to Meetup and find it, find it on there. And there's no presentation there, but just networking with all the other investors. It's like 35 bucks. You get some hors d'oeuvres and all networking the whole night. So feel free to come and find us on Meetup. So, yeah, cash bar. You guys pay. <laughs> get excited. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for your time today. Really, really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.